Now we want to turn our attention to what should be some of the easiest stuff that we do in this course. So we're just going to be doing some function evaluations, which really means you replace x with the given value and you do some arithmetic. Starting here, I with f of 7. Now I gave you two functions, I gave you f and g. Two different names, two different functions, two different rules, right? So starting with f of 7, that means that we're going to take, I'm going to color code this, I'll make this guy my blue guy, and I'm going to make G my pink one. So when I see F, I'm going to be thinking blue pen, and that means I'm going to take this function, and instead of writing X, I'm going to write a set of parentheses. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to take this input value of 7, so I'm replacing the X right here with 7. That's pretty much it you replace the x with a given value and you do the arithmetic. And this is where a lot of students tend to struggle because they don't know the order of operations. So, parentheses, but there's nothing to do here. Then you go to powers. You need to understand that the square, even the square that was right here, was only connected and only affecting the x. So this square is only going to affect the 7, not the 2. If you try to multiply 2 times 7 first, you're breaking the order of operations and the order of operations is going to break you. All right, so we have to do the 7 squared first, so that's 49. And now we multiply. 2 times 49 is 98. And then 98 minus 11 is 87. And that's it. We need to understand that you are not solving anything. You are plugging in a number, and you're evaluating, you're simplifying. There's no solving. You don't, at the end, say x equals anything. Well, this was x. This was your input value. 87 is your output value, and that corresponds to the y coordinate if you were to plot this. All right, g of negative 100. So let's come back up here. I'm going to replace that x with negative 100. So this is 8 plus 6. I need you to understand that right now, in this problem, x doesn't exist anymore. So if you write 8 plus 6x, you are wrong. Because this negative 100 is telling you, replace the x right now, immediately, with negative 100. That's what you're supposed to do. Make the substitution, make the replacement, do the math. So this now becomes 8, 6 times negative 100 is negative 600. And you find the difference here, so that's negative 592. Plug it in, do the work, and move on. All right, so the next problem that we come across, g of 5 halves, okay? So you see that I've already taken my g off of the screen. So what you may want to do is somewhere off to the side, rewrite that and say, okay, g of x is 8 plus 6x. So that's basically your formula. And now you're plugging in 5 halves to that formula. So this becomes 8 plus 6 times 5 halves, like that. And you know what? This is actually kind of nice because this is 6 over 1, and we can reduce because the 2 goes into 6 evenly 3 times leaving us with a denominator here of 1, so we don't have to worry about that. So all of a sudden, no fractions. 8 plus 3 times 5, which is 15. And these guys combine to 23. So even though we had fractions, and you might have had reason to be scared, remember, fractions are just numbers, and sometimes we get to simplify so that we don't have to worry about those denominators, right? That was easy. I'll take it. All right, now we have another example with f. So looking at the top of the page, f of x was 2x squared minus 11. All right, so that means 2, parentheses for the negative 3, replacing the x squared, minus 11. Remember, the square has to be applied to the negative 3 only. 
and it has to be done first. So negative 3 squared is positive 9 minus 11, so 18 minus 11 equals 7. Show each step piece by piece. Show that you understand how to do the order of operations. You understand how to plug into a function, and you're going to be fine. No issues. Now this is just evaluating one function at a time, but what if we need to do more than one function at a time? Because we have this concept called function operations. So again, let's stick with the same two functions, f and g. There we go. When you see an example like this that says g minus f of negative 5, that means that we need to evaluate g of negative 5 and f of negative 5, and then we need to subtract those values. Now, in the past, I see students try to do everything all cramped together at the same time. That's a bad idea. Instead, do what this problem is indicating here. Find this. Then find this. And once you have those two numbers, then you can subtract. So I suggest you go off to the side and you work each of these out on their own. So using the same colors that we did before, pink for G, and I'm going to do this one first. So let's see what this guy becomes. So off to the side, G of negative 5. So 8 plus 6 instead of x, we write negative 5. So 8 minus 30 equals negative 22. So in this next step here, and yes, I'm going to use parentheses here because it's almost like you're substituting. So instead of running g of negative 5, you write what we got, which is negative 22. And uh, that's it for that part. And then we come off to the side again, and we figure out f of negative 5. So f of negative 5, we're going to use this guy. So that's 2, parentheses, negative 5 squared, minus 11. So negative 5 squared is positive 25. And we'll just work this out. Multiplication comes next. 50 minus 11. Please make sure that you can subtract correctly. 50 minus 11 is 39 not other numbers that I might have seen in the past. So all of this, f of negative 5 becomes positive 39. Use colors when you take your exam, use colors when you take your notes, that way you can visually see what's going on here. Alright, now I just want to clean this up. So this is negative 22 minus, that's just minus 39. And you might say this is overkill, but you know if this had been a negative number, then having the parentheses would help me by doing a minus that's part of the problem and then a negative that's part of that um, result. Uh, but here it's just negative 39. Both of these numbers are negative, so they combine to give me a larger negative number, 22 and 39, will give me 61. So all of this for negative 61. Do the two small parts over here to the side, everything's going to be fine. Alright, let's do one more guy right here. F G of 4. So this means when these guys are right next to each other that means multiplication. So that means F of 4 times G of 4. Don't actually multiply these functions together. Don't take the x, you know, the variable expressions and multiply them together. That's a bad idea. Instead, do what we had above. Go off to the side and figure out each of these. Figure out what happens to this guy and figure out what happens to that guy. And once we have those values, then we multiply them. So we do them individually and come back and multiply. So f of 4, so that's 2 times 4 squared minus 11. All right, so 4 squared is 16. 
32 times 16, that's the next piece. 32 minus 11, and we end up with 21. All right? Plug it in, work out your order of operations. It shouldn't take you too long. We've done this years, for years, and years and years and years. All right, so f of 4 is now 21. Let's find g of 4. Looking at the top of the page, I see that this is going to be 8 plus 6 times 4. 8 plus 24 equals 32. So just replace this in here like that. There you go. So now we just have to do 21 times 32. So if you do that, you should get 672. Right? You know what? Sometimes it might go a little bit too fast in our heads. And there's no problem by taking this off to the side and multiplying that out. 1 times 2 is 2, times 3 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 6. And we add these guys. Hey, look! It's 672. There you go. Nice and easy, super quick. Again, when you have uh, operations with functions like this, separate them, evaluate them on their own, and then bring them back to either do multiplication like we had here, or like we had up above, we had subtraction. We figured them out individually, brought them back in, and then we subtracted the results. Take your time, follow the order of operations, and you won't have any problems.